to the uh, start of the afternoon session. Um, I'd like to welcome John Blackmore from Up UK. Yep. Yeah. Software architect, PHP developer, and Laravel advocate, coffee addict, drone enthusiast, and based in Taunton. Yes. Over to you. <laughs> Hi everyone, um, thanks for having me. Um, always a shock to sort of come to these events and see how many people actually turn up. We only ever expecting half a dozen, but uh, we seem to be more than that today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you today. Uh, it's only a 20 minute session and I've got 30 other slides, so I have to rattle through it quite quickly. Uh, but I want to talk to you about remote working. Um, this is something that I've been doing now for the last 18 months. Um, it, it's, it seems to be something that's getting offered more and more by companies the ability to work from home or not in the office. Um, I'll come to a, a few differences on that. Uh, I'm finding that our companies are starting to offer this for a number of different reasons. Sometimes it's, it's flexibility for uh, the employees, uh, allows them to fit things around their work uh, the rest of their, their lives. Uh, but also, um, I will come to a minute location, some kind of factor, um, and, and, and a number of other things. So, we have three, three main sections to this. Um, I'm hoping to leave some at the end for any questions you might have. So I'm going to cover off uh, what, what is remote working, um, and then my experience with remote working, and then a little bit of how it works. Uh, right, let's just turn this off then. Is it like it's off, isn't it? Can everyone hear me okay without the microphone? Yeah. Brilliant. It's just been that technology. Okay, um, so first of all, introduction to, to, to remote. Turn it off. Oh. Sorry, still picking up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Thank you. Better? Yeah. Brilliant. Sorry about that. Um, so, yeah, what, what, what is remote working? Um, these. Um, so what is remote working not at the moment is remote working isn't the same as outsourcing. Outsourcing is something that you might do for like a legal team or a HR team. That's when you have a piece of work and you send it off to another company to get done, brought back in. Remote working is also not the same as contracting um, or remote contracting is where you might have a, a project with a set deadline and set deliverables where you bring someone in to do the work and then you, you um, they leave at the end. Um, remote workers are full-time employees normally in the company, might be part-time employees, but the, the important thing is they are part of the company itself, um, but they don't work in the office. Um, they, they might work from home, they might work from a satellite office, um, maybe they don't work during the same office hours as, uh, as the rest of the team. Um, many roles I've come across are suitable for, for remote, but not all. Um, so. Where I work, we've got tech team, which is outsourced. We've got, um, sorry, not outsourced, remote, a remote tech team. We've got a remote, um, a couple of marketers that are working in the marketing team that work in remote. And we've got a designer working remote. Um, <coughs> there are certain things where you can't work remote. So if, if the, there has to be like a physical presence or someone has to be somewhere to do a certain thing. So you wouldn't want to out, uh, remote workers that say, for example, picking things and then packing them and sending them off or something because you generally need to be somewhere like a warehouse to do that kind of role. Also, if you've got like a face-to-face -face interaction with your customers, that's probably not something you can, you can make remote either. Um, I was struggling to find a, a good description of, of remote work, but I did manage to find one. Um, so I think it sums it up quite nicely. A, a remote worker is someone who works outside of a traditional office environment. Um, they might work from home, a coffee shop, or from anywhere that's not a regular office. Um, a company might be considered entirely of remote workers or uh, a mix of office workers and remote workers. Um, so what's the bad about working in offices? I know that before I moved to remote, I, I did eight, nine years in, in offices. Um, as a developer, uh, these are specific to my experiences of, of offices, but it might be different for anyone else. Um, I always found that the office was full of distraction, uh, especially when I've got big open plan offices. It's, it's very common practice these days for, for companies to have large open spaces, um, which is great for collaboration, hanging out with your workmates, um, but it's awful for sound. Um, sound travels really well in big open spaces. Um, co-workers, I love co-workers. I love the people that I work with, and sometimes I miss the people that I used to work with. Um, but because 
I don't know, because maybe because then they're, they're, they're not technical, they're not developers, they don't understand that you can't just come up, tap someone on the shoulder, and then they you lose that flow. You you spend a lot of time context switching in a in an office environment. And it could just be something as simple as somebody says something about something that you've just just pick up and, and it will it'd be enough to just distract you enough and then that's it, ten minutes gone and then you, you kind of getting back into the flow again. Um, and then that, that classic phone's ringing on empty desks. Um, it always seems to be that there's, there's a phone ringing somewhere and there's nobody there to answer it. So that's my personal beef with offices. Um, found another quote in a book. Uh, the office during the day has become the last place people want to be when they really want to get work done. So a, a lot of good work is done in offices, but as a technical person, I always find that it's people that come in early or work on late to try and get that sort of quiet side of the office. Um, I definitely found this. Uh, the, the book this comes from uh, is Remote Office Not Required. It's written by the guys um, behind Basecamp. Um, definitely recommend having a read through their work. They've got another book as well called um, Rework, which is about kind of building um, businesses and teams. Um, they're quite interesting reads. I found, found quite good. I definitely recommend them. Um, the other thing that I didn't like about office work as well was, was commuting. Um, if you drive to work, uh, say it takes you an hour in the day, right? straight away that's two hours of your day, gone. Uh, if you're driving in particular, that's 100% concentration time. You need to be 100% on the ball not to even make it as far as the office. Uh, so I consider that to be quite a bad use of time. Um, the, the buses and the trains aren't quite so bad because someone else is doing the driving for you. Um, but the costs are always increasing, right? It's quite expensive to commute. Um, when I was working in Bristol, uh, when I was working in Bristol, it was um, twelve pound a day or something to get there from Exeter. I believe it's a lot more than that now. Um, those costs are always going up. Um, it's quite a carbon footprint associated with that as well. Um, and also, there's, there's evidence. This is this is backed up. I'm not just saying your commute is killing you. There's actual evidence to suggest that people who are commuting more than twenty minutes to their work uh, each day. Um, suffer from or have increased risk of uh, obesity, stress, loneliness, uh, neck and back pain, uh, and the, the last one, divorce. Um, the, there was a, um, a study done and uh, there was a kind of a figure somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes, but like you were sort of like 30 or 40% more likely to end up divorcing your partner if you had to commute more than half an hour a day, which is like, nobody needs that, they shouldn't. Shouldn't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> My wife thinks it's great that I work from home, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I've got all, all this extra time to look after the kids. Um, there are a load of benefits for employees if, in, in remote work. Um, some of the ones that I've come across is, uh, me in particular, um, access to, to industries or roles that are not available locally. I mean, we live in a beautiful part of the, the, the world, uh, or definitely the, the country. Um, but unless you're in Exeter or you're in Bristol or you're in Plymouth, you're in these kind of tech hubby type thing, uh, places, it's quite difficult to find certain types of work. Um, I live in Taunton and there is a little bit of web work. There's, there is a little bit of tech in Taunton, but nowhere near as much as there is in Bristol, for example, or Exeter. So in order to go and find a, an interesting job, you, you have to travel, um, especially if you're living more, more out in the sticks. Um, I previously lived in North Devon and um, the, there's not a huge tech thing there, or there wasn't at the time. Um, so the other thing I've noticed as well is um, comparable or better salary and remote roles in general. So say, for example, you're earning X amount of, of annual salary in a job 30, 40 miles from where you live and you're computing. Even if you don't get any more money for working remote, you're saving because you, you don't have to pay out and lots of things like commuting. I'll come onto that in a little bit in a minute. Um, it's quite often as well you might be allowed more flexible working hours or times, um, saving on commuting. On the flexible working times, that's quite a good, um, something that I've noticed as well. Um, I've got um, kids in school, so I've now got the ability, because I'm working from home, I'm close enough that I can do the school run. So I can drop them off in the morning, get back, start work, no bother there. The mid afternoon's fine because it's only like 20 minutes up the road, come back, carry on working. Nobody's um, worried about that. Uh, I couldn't do that when I was in Exeter because it would have been an hour and 10 minutes to drive home. Um, better for the environment. Um, you're not commuting, you're not chucking out all that carbon. Um, there's also um, benefits for employers. 
Um, so you've got an access to a wider pool of talent potentially. If you're if you're an employer, uh, this, this is a problem that my uh, the company I work for um, had, where they couldn't find the right people for the right price and the right time in the right location. So by opening it out to to remote, uh, you, you get access to more people. Um, it lowers the cost of hiring sometimes with remote people, um, not for the most obvious thing, which might be that you might want to pay them less. Um, I don't advocate that. I, I believe that uh, you, you should still pay them exactly as you would if they were in the office. Um, but you don't have things like office costs. You don't have to find them a desk. You don't have to, to um, well, buy the desk. Um, there are companies like um, IBM who have saved billions of, of dollars by downscaling their, their operations, letting people work from home. Um, and then with all this extra office space that they're freeing up, um, they can either sell that on, make some money, or they can lease it out. Um, next door neighbor of mine, she works for, um, for BP in London. Um, she remote works. Um, they got rid of her desk um, up in London and they're saving huge amounts of money because they've reduced the amount of the building that they have to, to rent out each year. Um, the other thing as well is um, good remote workers are just good workers. Um, that they're, they're less distracted and they get stuff done. Um, there, there is this um, question mark as to um, whether or not if somebody's not in your direct line of sight, they're just going to spend all day playing video games and watching telly and messing around. Um, the reality of it is, is if you hire people like that, it doesn't matter if they're remote or whether they're just on the desk over for you, they're still going to mess around, they're still going to watch YouTube videos, Facebook, whatever it is that, that people do to not do what they're there to do, which is work. Um, so just because you can't see people, don't just assume that they're, they're not working. Um, can also reduce your employee turnover. Um, this is particularly um, noticeable in uh, areas where job markets are quite competitive. Um, there's a lot of um, poaching in around London, so there, there seems to be this kind of tech fad for developers to jump from one company to another company to another company, and it's almost as if as soon as somebody just gets up to speed with, with where they are, they get poached to move for a few thousand pounds more each year, and they move to another place in London and they just go around this circle and um, letting people work remotely, you kind of insulate yourself a little bit for that. The people that are working remotely for you respect the fact that you let them work from home. Um, also, they're less likely to get poached because not everybody in, in whatever sector you work in, tech sector for me, not everyone's going to let you work from home, so <laughs> um, I'm less likely to get poached. Um, Lower stress and higher staff morale. Again, studies show that people who work remotely report um, higher levels of morale uh, and lower levels of stress. A little bit more about my particular experience. Um, I'm John, I'm a remote worker. <laughs> I've been working for 18 months. Um, I work from Taunton for a London-based company. The company's called UPAD, They're an online lettings agent. Uh, and their key business is helping landlords self-serve and advertise their properties to find tenants. So rather than go to a estate agent and then they charge you however much it is that they charge, it can be thousands of pounds if you're in the southeast, uh, we just sell them a flat fee, we help them design their advert, get it on Zoopla, right move. Um, it's all kind of hands off and, and there's a lot of automation uh, and workflows there. But then there's also a load of, we've got a load of people in the office in London who are there to answer your questions. They're, they're all qualified. Um, I was the first full time, um, oh, yeah, 24 people at the moment, seven remote. So a th almost a third of our workforce at the moment is working remote. I was the first employee who worked full time remote. Um, and we kind of grew it from there. So now I've got. Um, uh, an entirely remote tech team, um, Devon, Somerset, Dorset. Um, by chance, more than anything, it's just ended up southwest bias. Uh, but we've also got a guy in London. And the interesting thing is, um, although he's in London, he's not far from the office, he still works from home. Um, just because you've got an office doesn't mean you have to work there. Wow. It works quite well for us. Mm -hmm. Personally, I found remote working, I'm getting on average 50% more good quality work done. What I mean by that is I'm not doing 50% more hours, I'm just getting longer stints of uninterrupted work on things. So whereas 
when you work in the office, your day's chopped up into like 10 and 15 minute segments where people, it could be like a phone rings, like this distraction, or someone will touch you on the shoulder, distraction. You've got a meeting to go to, distraction. By kind of removing yourself from that, it kind of gives you a better flow through it. Um, I'm also saving 12 hours a week by not commuting to work. So it's an hour each way, each day. Um, directly, £255 per month, um, just saved on fuel. Um, I, my car's fairly efficient, um, but still, it's, the fuel costs a lot of money. It's like £3,000 a year just on fuel. It just goes up in, in smoke, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's money that's very well um, better off in my bank account. Um, office politics and distractions, I think we've covered that enough. Um, this is an interesting point because someone questioned me about it. Monthly socials with work colleagues. The interesting thing about um, working remote is when you get together and you're all in the same place at the same time, you value each other's time a lot more. You respect the fact that you're having a face-to-face -face meeting with someone. Um, I go up to London once a month. It's only uh, two nights that I spend away from home. Um, but during that time, I'm out with the guys that I work with. I'm out with the other teams. Um, I'm a lot more integrated with the people that I work with than I ever was when I worked in an office. Because when I was working in the office, it was 40 hours a week and it was like the last thing I wanted to do at the end of 40 hours every week was to go out and spend any more time with these people. I just wanted to go home, just <laughs> sleep, whatever. Um, every month we go out, we, we have one night and we'll, we'll go out, we'll have beers or we'll um, bowling or something like that. And then we'll have one night in where we'll just chat, watch a film, get pizza. Um, never used to do that before. But it's not all good, and I'm trying to uh, make sure this doesn't sound like this silver bullet for, for working, is everyone works remote and you're all going to be happy, and it, it doesn't quite work out like that. Personally, uh, when I started working remote, uh, I, after a couple of weeks, after the, the honeymoon period wore off, I did find myself quite feeling quite remote. Um, you do feel isolated from your work colleagues. Um, I think it's common. Everyone that I've brought on since has always said to me when they're a couple of weeks in, um, I'm really struggling, I like just, just adjusting to it. But it is something that passes quite quickly. Um, you, you do have to um, try really hard written communication. A lot of your time as a remote worker is going to be spent typing. So it's either going to be instant messages or um, emails. Uh, occasionally it'll be phone calls. Um, but because you're not directly in front of that person that you're, you're communicating with, it's very hard to read. You, you have to, it's not like you can, you can look at their face and read read their, their mood or, or something. You have to be quite careful with your words. Uh, and you do have to practice. Uh, I, I've spent a lot of time trying to work on my written communication, uh, especially when managing people, because you, you need to be really clear on what it is that you want them to do, um, as not to waste their time, um, but also so that you get what it is that you want them to build. Um, and it does take ongoing practice. Um, I find that by reading a lot, you, you, you kind of, learn how to subconsciously you learn how to express what it is that you're trying to get across so um spend a lot of time reading um and i think that goes on um final thing that i i have struggled with is you need to be really good at self-planning so if you're a person that's very scatty not very good at keeping to schedules or no idea how to break down your work remote working probably isn't going to work for you um and it doesn't work for everyone. I mean, I, I've been very lucky that, that the people that I've hired, they're all still with us. Um, most of the people that, that I've spoke to who work remote really enjoy it, but some people don't. They really miss that interaction and, and some people do go back to work in, in the office. And I, I, don't, uh, I don't resent that at all. It's like, it's however you want to work that's best for you. Uh, a few top tips for working at home. Get dressed in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping I'd get a giggle, right? This is really important. It's a psychological thing. When, just because you work at home and you start work at nine, it doesn't mean you can wake up at five to nine and roll out the bed and then just pick your laptop up and start working, right? You need to, uh, you need to get yourself into that mindset, right? This is my work, this is my home time. This is my work time, right? Even something as simple as just getting out of bed, having a shower and getting dressed, that's enough to trick your brain into thinking, right, I'm not at home sleep mode now. It's, it's time to sort of professionalise a little bit. Um, when I first started, my next door neighbour, my, 
another next door neighbor, um, he said that he used to, when he used to work rem remote, what he used to do was trick himself into thinking that he'd gone to work. So what he'd do is he'd, he'd get out in the morning, put shoes on, he'd go for a walk to the end of the road, turn around, come back. And it's just, it's just that little, it sounds really silly, right? But I tried it for a little while and it worked, right? I went out, walked around the, around the housing estate, came back and it worked. It's, it's almost like your, your brain needs that trigger to, to switch it between I'm at home mode and I'm doing some work. Uh, the other important part to that is it's really important to have a designated area where you're going to work. Um, like I said, you can just wake up at five to nine and pull your laptop out from under your bed and you can sit and type. And, and nobody's going to know because on the internet nobody knows. Um, but you're not going to, you, you won't last. Um, it's really difficult to, to kind of get that mind switch going. Um, I'm quite lucky that I have... Um, We've got a conservatory off the back of our house and it has doors that you can shut. If you can shut the doors on, on it at the end of the day, that's fantastic. Uh, it means that you have your, your separate area. Um, the right tools are really important as well. Um, get yourself a good quality monitor. We've got big 25 inch quad HD monitors. Um, it's just the right tool. You, you need good stuff to. Desks and chairs as well, also really important. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering, is that, is that my cue to say that I'm off? <laughs> Wrap it up, we're gone. <laughs> um, yeah, try and avoid distractions as best you can. <laughs> <laughs> phone's ringing, yeah. Um, I, I, other ones, things like, um, if you work in a kitchen, working in the kitchen is really bad because you've always got access to snacks, um, but also things like the dishwasher. And it's like, oh, the dishwasher's going off, I'll, I'll go and do that. Um, if you find that you're... Um, getting constantly distracted, it might be a sign that, that perhaps the work that you're working on isn't clearly defined as it needs to be. Maybe you're trying to find excuses not to work because you're either not enjoying what you're doing or you don't understand what you're doing. Um, it's always a good sign then if you see yourself following that pattern that um, maybe there's something not quite right, just, just sort of like stop, have a little think about it, ask some questions if you need to. Um, I think my last, oh yeah, last one, respect working hours. Um, this is really important. It's very, very, very easy to overwork when you're working remote because you have everything that you need just next door. It's quite easy just to nip in at like nine o'clock at night, just check your work emails or you start work at eight and you finish at half six, but you've got to be really careful because burnout creeps up on you. Uh, if you suddenly, you, you take your working day uh, and you're extending it by an hour either side, um, that might be sustainable for a, for a few days, a few weeks, but over time it will start sort of getting on top of you. So um, I am constantly on to my, uh, my guys, uh, my remote workers about respecting work hours. There's, there's one guy, he, um, he'll have a habit of like logging in at eight o'clock at night and then doing two hours in the evening. And I was like, look, you've got to stop it because I don't mind you doing it, but the thing is you're not gonna, it's gonna come back and you, you're gonna get tired, you're gonna get upset with it. Just have a break very quickly because um, I know I'm behind time now. Uh, managing remote work is really important that you hire carefully. Team fit's super important. It's always important when you're in the office, but it's even more so when remote. Uh, you've got to have a zero tolerance for anyone who's not um, fully integrated with the team. If they're slacking off or they're snide comments, you need to be right on top of that because it, it propagates really quickly in remote teams. Um, good workers, I mentioned before, will naturally take to remote workers. Um, fakers will be found out very fast. I've found this before. Quite often we can spot fakers before they've even come to interview. Um, it's a bit of a weird one. You just, sometimes you have that gut feel. You give them a code test and yeah, it turns out they're, they're not what they say they are. Uh, and you've got to 100% trust your workers to get the job done. Because uh, if you can't trust them, uh, if you can't let your employees work from home for fear that they're going to slack off, you're a babysitter, not a manager. That's we're trying to work to. Quick slide on stuff that we use. Um, it's really easy to work from remote. We've got all these communication tools available to us. We use Slack every day for instant messages, communications. We've broken it down into channels so different teams can t have different conversations. Um, screen Hero, if you haven't used it before, is, is pair programming. You share a screen, you get two cursors and, and you've got two keyboards and you can both work on the same thing at the same time, um, which sounds amazing. It's not. It, it is amazing, but sometimes it can get a little bit complicated <coughs> when you're both trying to type at the same time. Um, Jira and Trello for project management. This is more for uh, it's management within the team, but also so that we can show the rest of the business what we do. Uh, file sharing through Dropbox, 
Dropbox Paper, uh, if you haven't used it, is like a real-time collaboration, a bit like Google Docs, loads of people on the same document at the same time, typing in different places, that is quite cool. Um, and we use one password for our password management. Um, a quick note on secure laptops. Um, this came up because someone questioned me. I was like, oh, how do you know that uh, your devices, once they're off-site, they're not going to get stolen? I was like, well, it, doesn't, it kind of doesn't matter because if you've got your laptops properly set up, all of our laptops are set to automatically lock. You have to have passwords to log back into them. The disk encrypted by default. Uh, we use two-factor authentication using USB tokens or generated codes. And all of our really sensitive stuff is IP restricted, so you can only get onto it if you can get onto the VPN. Um, what this means is if I lose my laptop or I drop it, which I have done previously, it doesn't matter so much because it's just a case of get another laptop, install the stuff that you need, get going. All of our codes in GitHub, so you pull it down. It's, it's less hassle than, than perhaps if you worked in a uh, public sector and you left it on a train, uh, which I'm sure never happens. <laughs> um, the, the last important thing that... Um, is, is worth mentioning. Um, FaceTime is really important for our remote team where, where I work. Um, we all get together in London, it's three days a month, two nights away. Um, this is where we do our face to face meetings, our retrospectives, catching up with the team. Um, we have catch ups. And I've mentioned team bonding and socialising, so that'd be um, we went urban golf one time, another time we had a barbecue at our boss's house, and another time we went bowling. And it's just kind of those things that you kind of to get to know people outside of work. Um, final note, we are hiring. If any of this sounds interesting to you, and <laughs> now you're gonna think, oh, this is a 28 minute pitch just to get some people. Um, but my boss said, look, if you want the day off, you're gonna have to mention that we're hiring. Um, web engineers, front end engineers, um, if any of this sounds interesting to you, or if you've got any other questions, questions, afterwards whenever I don't think we've got time now but um, but but thank you so much for for your time if you do have a question do come and speak to me I'm more than happy to, to discuss brilliant so thank you very much